Warning, this episode contains profanity and pretty much nothing else. I mean, what the fuck did you expect? This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by a new podcast I'm working on. I don't have the title locked in yet, but right now we're calling it Putting Nate Silver's TI-82 Calculator Inside James Comey with Heath. Open to try a new and unique process every week. Suggestions are welcome. And now, the scathing atheist. Hi, this is Jason. And this is the voiceover robot from the Skeptic Smash Talk podcast. And we're here to tell you that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. Except for me. Jason created me. He is God. And we must go to war for him. Thursday. It's November 10th. And fuck. Yeah, no kidding. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from New York, New York, in Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, fuck Pennsylvania, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Lucinda invents a time machine made of rage and microwave parts. We hook up Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Breyer to a monatomic gold respirator. Oh, shit. And the 2020 presidential election begins. But first, the diatribe. It was so funny on Tuesday... Tuesday was so funny. You, you were you were probably in on it. I, I mean, I know a lot of you were, but for the rest of you, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you guys what happened. So Eli was mad at me for eating the last devil dog again. And you know, Eli, he started a prank war. And what he did was he hired all the guys from CNN and MSNBC and Fox News, and he had them record hours of presidential election footage. But like, you know, as if Trump had won. And then, and then, and then he hacked into my cable and made a whole different internet that corroborated all this, like, Trump's gonna be president nonsense and rerouted all my devices to that. And I'll be honest with you, he almost got me. I almost believed it. And then, of course, I realized how infinitely more likely that series of events was to the alternative explanation, namely that the election for the president of the United States of America was just won by Donald wall-building, Muslim-banning, disability-mocking, climate-change-denying, fat-shaming, pussy-grabbing, Franken-Cheeto Trump. I mean, seriously, guys, gals, what in the monkey shit just happened? How the fuck am I supposed to put words together now? I'm supposed to get on here today and not just see how long I can hold the U in fuck. I, what the hell do you want from me? I, I, I got some set of words that, that encapsulates the nuclear fuck tartary that just befell the world. Donald Trump is going to be president. That will always have happened. Right. We will never make up for that. If every American went out tomorrow and cured a different strain of cancer, we would still be the country that elected Donald Trump to run it. Who put Donald Trump in charge of the world's largest nuclear arsenal. This shit's going to be in history books. Our great, great, great grandkids are going to know about this and they're going to tell them that we already knew about the pussy grabbing shit before we elected him. I mean, re- remember back when I was going to do jokes about the president having a vagina? <laughs> I was going to come out and I would say like more like Ova office and then you would laugh and we would move on to other shit. It was a simpler time. A time before Nate Silver could go fuck himself. Back when we were counting the 2018 midterms before they'd hatched. A time when we so radically underestimated the per capita stupidity of America that we never took the words President Donald J. Trump seriously. A time when we naively said there is absolutely no way that I am surrounded by the kind of frothing at the mouth shit for brains dingle tards it would take to elect Donald fucking Trump to the highest office in the country. I would have noticed how few of them got their pants on the correct appendages every day by now. 
But now we live in a different world, a more negligently stupid world. And the most terrifying thing about this world is that it is genuinely post-truth. You know, we just went through an election where one of the candidates would literally just make up whatever number he wanted, attach it to whatever problem he wanted, and then just carry on. And as we speak, four out of every two black people in Chicago is being murdered. And it doesn't fucking matter that even the most conservative media outlet you can possibly take seriously is saying, well, yeah, that's bullshit and it doesn't even make sense. Sorry about that. Because apparently the majority of voters don't care what's true. They live in a world where global warming is a myth and Jesus is going to save them and their biggest concerns are the mind control powder on their juice box lining and the yoga mats they put in Subway bread. And while I'll admit that this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened in all of human history, I feel like it's a pretty solid contender for the stupidest. It could lead to the worst. We've been running around here pretending we're smart enough to keep doing democracy even after the George W. Bush re-election thing. You know, we were all like, no, look, we did a black guy. He's a lawyer. He knows smart words. And we fooled ourselves into thinking we could be trusted around voting booths again. And make no mistake, if you're looking for somebody to blame, look in the fucking mirror. I know when I look there, I see a guy who has a political podcast. He kept on hiatus for an entire presidential election because he was too busy doing that other show about important stuff like what David A.R. White looks like a cartoon character fucked, which is admittedly probably not what you see when you look in the mirror. So maybe you can start by blaming me, but then look in the mirror and blame yourself because when things are this fucked up in a democracy, it's too late to blame the candidates. You have to blame the electorate. And no matter how much you did, you obviously didn't do enough. So, yes, I am talking to you, too. Unless you're one of our non-American listeners, in which case I'm just glad you haven't stopped hanging out with us. I, and, and, and I apologize in advance for bombing your country when one of your late-night comedians makes a joke about our president's sexual assault bravado. I mean, I'd love to just point at somebody and be able to say, like, yo, it was all the uh, – it was, it was the Christians or whatever. And then we could gang up on the real culprit. But in a case like this, there is no one real culprit, and pretending there is is any way to solve problems unless of course those problems are voter turnout in the rust belt in which case it works just fucking fine look the real problem here is that we're a bunch of spoiled brats that have lived in a democracy that could essentially function on cruise control for a couple of decades we bitch about the system without realizing that we are the system now and despite all the evidence to the contrary we trusted americans not to do the most stupidly self-destructive thing they could possibly do Now, don't get me wrong here. I am not trying to tack onto that tired trope that says we're all equally to blame for the 60 million people who actually went to the polls to vote for a misogynistic, white supremacist, sexual assaulter. There are certainly people who bear more blame than others. And if you happen to see a frightened white man pining for the days when brown people were easier to subjugate internationally when you looked in the mirror, you deserve way more derision than the guy who's thinking to himself, you know, I could have taken Ted to the polling station. Ted liked Hillary. Fuck. But when something is this broken it is everyone's fault who has the remotest chance of fixing it and hasn't done that yet but if you need a silver lining i might have one for you because when all is said and done donald trump actually will make america great again in about four years after we're done erasing all the progress we just made. See, look, he's going to teach yet another generation that you can't sit this shit out and trust the American people to vote sanely. He'll incense enough people to get Democratic majorities in both houses of Congress in the midterms, and assuming we make it through the next four years without a Twitter fight sparking an atomic holocaust, we'll rise from the ashes of this disaster with a populace that knows their democracy cannot function without their full attention. And look, the only other choice is that we keep going in this direction until we collectively stupid ourselves to death in a matter of about eight years. And I feel like at this point, both of those outcomes leave us with a better world. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are two people demographically at fault for the death of American democracy, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to start telling people we're black? Do you think that would help? Or, or that we're women, we'd say that. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Sorry, what? <laughs> I was still yeah, not as, working. As appealing as it sounds to be a black woman right now, I'm going to pass. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> Oh, fuck. And obviously, we've got a lot still to bitch about this week. But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear about this week's first sponsor. Hey, Heath, what you, what you got there? Oh, oh, this? This is my... uh 
my sassy T-shirt. Uh-huh. It says, uh, eat it on there, you see? Eat it. Eat it? Yeah. Yeah, you know. Eat it, like the, I, the phrase. I do not I do not know. But it, it's, it's what they had, okay? It's, it's, it's a phrase. How much did that shirt cost? $70. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. Is this scenario all too common in your life? Do you just not have any cool stuff? Do you find yourself on a quest for epic gear, houseware, and collectibles all too often? You might be suffering from lame stuff syndrome, and it's time to ask your doctor about Loot Crate. Lame stuff syndrome affects the geekathalamus in the brain, replacing the desire for awesome wearables and collectibles with purchases from Spencer's Gifts. But Loot Crate can help with an epic range of pop culture items for less than $20 a month. Just listen to this satisfied customer. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. Before Loot Crate, when people would come over, I'd show them my pet brick. It was a brick that I, that I put in a fish tank. My lame stuff syndrome was so serious, I required an immediate transfusion of a bigger box with even bigger loots in Loot Crate DX. Now when people ask about my stuff, the story doesn't include people who died and left it to me. Be the envy of your friends and get your 100% exclusive crates at lootcrate.com slash atheist and enter the code atheist to save $3 off any new subscription before your lame stuff syndrome gets out of hand. What if I turn it inside out? No, no, that's definitely, that's worse. That's definitely worse. Get ready for November's enchanting theme, Magical. Loot Crate has cast a powerful ancient spell to deliver you November's crate, featuring bewitching items from Doctor Strange, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Big Trouble in Little China, and so much more. Do not wait. You have until the 19th of November at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe for November's crate. When it's over, it's over. No more crates. So go to lootcrate.com slash atheist and enter our code atheist to save $3 off any new subscription today. Thanks, Loot Crate. Eat it. Dude, just stop trying to make eat it work. Ricka raw, ricka ricka raw, eat it raw. <laughs> and now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, we're too stupid to do democracy anymore. And that makes us smart, right? I just, I, for, for fuck's sake, before this, I had written this whole story about how Hillary had won the election. I'd written it on Tuesday. I was sure it would be good. And then I had to just delete that whole fucking thing. And what I wrote instead is about 190 times I wrote the word fuck with bold in the middle saying, what the fuck is wrong with us with a bunch of Entera bangs afterwards. And then I wrote, and in conclusion, fuck. I mean, can we talk about other stuff? I, I I, mean, look, I, I, I got the sound off on this shit in the diatribe, so feel free to send the message to the negligently stupid American electorate if you want. But after that, can we just like pretend Obama will be for our forever president and just do a show as though the apocalypse isn't looming in January's shadow, please? Uncle Henry? Auntie M? Fuck! It's just, I've been doing it all <laughs> goddamn night. Man, that whole Jade Helm, Obama staying president thing sure is attractive yeah, now. Right! Is it too late? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it, too, is it too late to start taking Alex Jones seriously? Apparently all the serious news got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I, I actually do want to say something. And look, maybe this is bullshit, but I woke up this morning. We all did, actually. We woke up this morning to, to a friend of ours saying, hey, you know, you guys should take a few days off. You deserve it. And the very first thing that came to my mind was absolutely fucking not. Yeah. People are listening to this show for laughs. And and I'm going to deliver fucking double down laughs because that's that's my part. So whatever it is you do, you got to double down on that shit because as scared as I am, as sad as I am, I will not let it defeat me. These assholes ain't seen nothing yet. You made my wife cry. You woke the fucking beast. And you're going to miss the version of me that thought it was winning. Yeah. No, and we should have some fucking, like, some trumpets and then some, like, airplanes flying by at the end of that in post or something. But, but look, look, I mean, 
we've never been through this shit before. Like, I, I woke up depressed when Kerry lost. I woke up with that, you assholes just reelected George W. Bush pit in my stomach that lasted four years. But this is different. This is not like the other guy's candidate one. This is the misogynistic, racist, fascist, bully one. This is proof that you can win an election just by appealing to the worst parts of the worst Americans. Fear, racism, hatred, nationalism, sexism, and stupidity. And we're going to do our part, like Eli says, to beat back the flames of idiocy burning down American democracy over the next four years. But for now, we're going to set all that shit aside and pretend jokes are still funny for a little while. Read some shit that we wrote before all of this happened. We wrote more shit. We wrote shit with this. We wrote shit when Hillary was going to be president. It was funny. We wrote, we wrote comedy. Oh. We wrote co- Heath and I were together during the like the election last night, watching it together, and I kept turning to him and being like, we got to do a comedy show. <laughs> awesome. We're excited for our comedy. Great. Yeah, uh, and don't worry, we already have Liz Warren at a snow cabin running with tree trunks <laughs> and doing push-ups with me on her back. And she is surprisingly strong. I was not surprised. I was not I'm surprised. Surprisingly heavy. Eli, make <laughs> us laugh, please. <laughs> well, hey, and in you said there was nothing to look forward to news tonight. Shovel with a Nickelback haircut and one of the heads of Pure <laughs> Flix Studios, David R. White, confirmed with CNN this week that God's Not Dead 3 is in the Oh, works. shit. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jesus, I am your father. I'm not saying that's where they're going to go, but that's where they should go. David A. R. White should turn out to be God. Okay, well, if Melissa Joan Hart gets her hand cut off and then <laughs> makes out with her sister, I am on <laughs> board. <laughs> You heard him. He's not joking. He wants you to cut off Melissa Joan Hart's hand. <laughs> Weird. Why would he say that? That's so crazy. Why would Eli start a website for it? <laughs> cut off Melissa Joan Hart's hand dot com. Please. Please Don't, make that website. He's, he's, Don't make he's that website. laughing and joking. Remember we said we were going to joke from this point out. <laughs> Andrew's um, already having a bad yeah, week. Yeah, no shit. Don't pile on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so... For those of you who sat with us through the end credits of God's Not Dead 2, you'll know it ended with White's character, Pastor, a truck ran over my face, being arrested (laughs) for not submitting his sermons to an evil, atheist, chicken-eating government (laughs) clerk. For some reason. (laughs) Some reason, based on the historicity of government clerks being so on the side of secularism, I guess. Anyways, so it looks like we can hope for a third non-existent persecution fantasy. I- I'm just hoping this one has Ewoks. You know what I'm saying? I right. Just- <laughs> hell yeah. They bust out at Golgotha, start fucking up Romans with bolos and the Cupid doll effect. Box office gold, David. <laughs> and then at the end, we find out that Spock's not dead. He's surely alive. Yeah, the hell's yeah. I love those movies. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's not all bad news, though. Even though the first movie cost $2 million and made $60 million, the second cost $5 million. Uh, one assumes solely based on the cost of keeping Melissa Joan Hart's face attached to her body, <laughs> but it only made $20 million. So doing the math there, and slightly better than Nate Silver, uh, we can assume <laughs> this one will cost $12.5 million and only make $6 million. So uh, we're yeah. getting there. What I'm saying is we're getting there. <laughs> And in Gokling's news tonight, the 15th voting district of Colorado should continue living in abject shame thanks to State Representative Gordon Klingenschmidt, who they elected to hold public office. All the voting districts still there be in abject shame. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, those of you who don't follow um, turtleneck suits blowing swine like bubbles from their neck hole. (laughs) Klingen Schmidt is the uh, former military chaplain and ignorant fucking monster who thinks President Obama is an actual demon. Mm-hmm. Also suggested that affordable health care causes cancer and believes mm-hmm. that gay equals pedophile. Well, there you go. We cured yeah. cancer last night. Well, guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> given uh, this guy's obvious medical expertise, he decided we all needed his opinion on a recent move by the National Institute of Health to study the increased incidence of depression, HIV, AIDS, and cancer among members of the LGBT community. And basically, he's mad because this is a subsidy for sodomy. Oh, That's for what he thinks. Yeah. And, and I guess it's messing with the 
equilibrium price <laughs> of sodomy. For sodomy? <laughs> Uh, These no people are in charge now. And, you know, look, while we're on the subject, I've had it with this reverse racist way we study the sickle cell trait, you know, while we're talking about it. <laughs> and, and and why do the patients of cancer get all the chemo, right? I, Heath has to shave his head twice a week. It's not fair. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks to Right Wing Watch. You should be on Dave Rubin's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thanks to Right Wing Watch who Clay and Schmidt tried to sue for directly quoting his horrible statements. Mm -hmm. We have a direct quote from his latest horrible statement. <laughs> <laughs> Go right wing watch. In response to the news about the NIH, he actually said the following words. Quote, so now they're going to get bonus pay, bonus pay, <laughs> to treat the diseases which they bring on due to their behavior. End quote. He's wow. talking about the LGBT community. Yeah, and the AIDS. Yeah. And... Apparently, he thinks this policy is going to get abused when everyone starts realizing the obvious loophole in the system, which, of course, would be phase one, become depressed gay people with cancer and AIDS, <laughs> phase three, profit. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think we can all agree that depressed gay AIDS patients have it easy enough already, especially under this new president we got coming. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so amazing is, like, the, he thinks that, like, people don't deserve medical care for things they bring on themselves. So if you get in a car crash, Gordon Klingenschmidt just wants to show up outside and be like, really? Really? You had to text. <laughs> <laughs> no. No hospital for you. I'm consistent. Should have bought a Volvo. That's on you. Steal safety cage. All right. One last point on this. Um, e Even if this was, like, gay reparations, like Klingenschmidt seems to think, uh, we pretty much fucking should be paying damages to the gay community. I mean, no shit. They just became partial humans last year, and it took a goddamn Supreme Court ruling. Uh, I mean, same thing with black people, but they, they've they've had it since 1868, and now <laughs> racism is completely gone, and they're crushing it. Yeah, so I think we're even with them now. But the gay people, for sure, <laughs> no. something, some kind of damages. Shit. And in you never go ash to mouth news tonight, the Catholic Church released new guidelines with regards to cremation last week because apparently their intrusive and creepy co-ownership of your body doesn't end at death. Hmm. That was Bill Donahue's suggestion for a slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you never go ash to mouth? That was. <laughs> it's not too late for that to succeed. Yeah, and, and their statement makes it sound like they did this because they were tired of people leaving urns just any old yeah, place. Right. <laughs> Hold on, though. I think that there's a valid concern there. We had my grandma's urn and uh, a cup of coffee on top of the car, and we just drove away no, right I away from the urn. So embarrassing. Happens, yeah. Yeah. And, and to be fair, it is their most modestly priced receptacle. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right. So according to the spin they had to put on this to make the money grubbing nature of it a little less transparent, having a gravesite quote encourages family members and the whole Christian community to pray for and remember the dead while at the same time fostering veneration of martyrs and saints, end quote. So, you know, the five to 9,000 bucks a pop they get for a hole in the ground is nice, and the fact that they figured out how to use cemetery maintenance fund as a shelter against paying their sexual abuse victims is a great perk, but it's really about the remembrance and, and, and the prayers and stuff. That's the key. Hey, now, hey, a ton of those kids kill themselves. And if that's not cemetery maintenance, oh, what wow. is? <laughs> Trump's a job creator. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Hold on, though. But, I mean, if cemeteries start going away, where are all the middle school kids supposed to take their uh, Ouija boards and play paintball and go munging? I mean, oh, there's like a, like a, Google that. <laughs> no, Google don't that. Google, Google that. that. Show it to your kids. <laughs> Well, the, the point the point is, it's not just about you, brave people. Like, I get what the Vatican is saying. <laughs> Always thinking of yourself, you damn Assholes. bereaved. And I, I should also add, if you're a human and you're not donating your body to science, you're doing it wrong. Okay? Well, uh, I got a polite no thank you from science. Well, you I tried. tried. Yeah. <laughs> Heath, for the third time, they want you to wait until you're dead. I want a robot arm. <laughs> <laughs> and also, by the way, while we're on the subject... 
If you're a religion and you're discouraging people from donating their bodies to science, you're a pariah on your larger culture and you should have to put the assholes who want to keep blind people blind and rookie surgeons guessing on your business card, right? This is no different than like than burning down the MRI scanner when you're done with it. Well, don't need that anymore. Also, you're missing out on some <laughs> supreme opportunities to mess with people, which is why once a week I swallow a scroll with convoluted directions to a treasure chest I've buried filled with my own poop. <laughs> some med students here. Yeah, but you have a great story. <laughs> he will. He will. And in a bunch of different guys one cup news tonight, it's that time of a year again. <laughs> Namely, after Halloween, which means that Christmas is in the air. With traditions like gifts, joy, and people being very specific about the cup they want their pumpkin spice latte. In. <laughs> it's a tradition. Yeah, a chilled one so we don't scald our, our little baby tongues. <laughs> <It's avoiding. laughs> That's exactly right. That is exactly right. <laughs> this month, Starbucks unveiled yet another new cup, Uh-oh. which wasn't a Christmas cup. Oh, shit. But that didn't stop Christians from losing their shit anyway. <laughs> the new cup is not only green, which is... You know, the only color Jesus who's a yellow lantern can't control, <laughs> but featured the faces of a variety of people, some of whom very well might not be Christians. And for many, this went too far. I see one more Jew face on my goddamn coffee cup. <laughs> there, there is no way to finish that sentence in a good way. No way to do it. The fuck is wrong with you people? Ellipses. A lot of their sentences just end in ellipses. I'm not. So the right leaning Daily Wire accused Starbucks of, quote, beckoning for protests last year, end quote, which, just a quick reminder, was having a cup without Jesus front-kicking a Jew into an <laughs> oven already filled with gay Muslims. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. I knew I could finish that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so, ways. Well, only by ruining the surprise on the design of this year's scathing atheist Christmas cups. <laughs> I Fuck, know, dude. I'm sorry. I'm just excited. I'm excited. They're so beautiful. Great holiday gifts. Scathingatheist.com. <laughs> Jewish Holocaust Christmas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the article went on to describe Josh Fierstein's meltdown about it in a way that would make my recent deposition about, quote, falling into Phyllis Schlafly's grave with a stapler and a picture of Kelly Kohlberg's face when my pants fell off angel <laughs> seem downright even-handed by comparison. At SPLC, pay attention to me. <laughs> You'll get there, Eli. They all killed themselves last yeah, night. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> However, not to oh, fear, geez. it turns out, as I said at the beginning, this was not a Christmas cup. It was just a cup reflecting on how shitty this year has been and how a hundred plus faces drawn all in one line symbolize Starbucks's wish that we all be a little bit more unified. A nice message, which Christians reacted to accordingly. Yeah, right. <laughs> And quick, while Josh Fierstein is distracted with blacking out all the ethnic-looking faces with a Sharpie, we'll pause for a break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she wants. If it's a legitimate race. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey! I'm proud of a man! This week in Massage. Well, if nothing else, we know that ethics and gaming journalism are safe for the next four years. I mean, what the actual fuck, guys? I woke up on Wednesday morning embarrassed to look my cats in the eye. I, I looked at them like, I know your species is the one that licks its ass clean and eats carpet snags if I don't stop them, but we're the ones who elected Donald Trump as our president. So maybe you should feed me from now on. And look, I know the blame game was cranked up to 11 before the results from the Rust Belt were even in. All the Bernie supporters started blaming the Hillary supporters for not backing the more dynamic candidate. All the Hillary supporters started blaming the Bernie supporters for not getting more enthusiastic about the more moderate candidate. All the pundits were blaming the pollsters. The Democratic Party was blaming the electorate. The electorate was blaming the party. The news channels were blaming each other. And, you know, I kind of wanted to take the high road here and, and do my segment on all of us coming together. But I just can't. Because they're all right. The Hillary supporters are right. The, the Bernie supporters are right. And we should have listened to each other's concerns a little closer instead of blocking one another on Facebook. So, yeah, we've all got plenty of blame to shoulder this week. And with apologies, I'm going to go ahead and heap a little more on there, too. 
I mean, can we at least accept that some of the reason Hillary lost is American vagina phobia? And before you dismiss that, I want you to imagine a man with the same qualifications as Hillary. A man who had served two terms in the Senate, acted as Secretary of State, had been in the public eye for decades without any real scandals. I want you to imagine that this same guy had been pilloried by the opposition for the same lame-ass non-scandals as Hill Dog. He used the wrong email once. He told banks that the little people shouldn't always get what they want. He had a charitable institution that made money. You know, that kind of stuff. Just imagine Hillary, except with a penis. And tell me that you honestly think that guy would have had any trouble trouncing Trump in the general. Or, if that's too much for you, try going the other way with it. Imagine Trump with a vag. Imagine some racist-ass woman that promised America she was going to wave a magic, bring back all the jobs wand, and lack the intelligence to pull off a convincing sentence. Imagine some lady that bragged about grabbing guys by the ball sack. Or, hey, set that aside. And just imagine a woman who had five kids from three different husbands. Imagine how quick the American electric would have been to gobble her up. Look, I'm not saying sexism is the only problem we have here. That would be as stupid as pretending it isn't part of the problem at all. But when your country chooses to elect a man who openly brags about sexual assault, passively fat shames women like he's doing them a favor, and blames tough questions on spontaneous menstruation, while at the same time overlooking a perfectly qualified woman applying for the same job, it's impossible to believe. Now, if you'll excuse me, I hear Edinburgh is beautiful. I need to research Scottish immigration law. So I'll go ahead and hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in Everybody Hates Rich News Tonight, according to a new study published in the journal Public Understandings of Science, Richard Dawkins is a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great how this all worked out. In fairness to Dawkins, though, the public's understanding of science, uh, that helped bring back measles and whooping cough for the last 10 years. <laughs> Not the journal, just the meaning of that phrase, yeah, though. Definitely right, did. and elected Mike Pence as its vice president. And, and in fairness to the public <laughs> understanding of science, Richard Dawkins is a dick. So, <laughs> okay. I'm not saying that with judgment. I also am a dick, you know. You yeah, be... let, let's explain. Let's yeah. explain. Okay. So, this was a survey about sort of what people thought about science, and the survey covered 20,000 scientists. 137 of them participated in in-depth interviews, and this is real, despite the researchers <laughs> not asking any questions about Richard Dawkins, 48 of them brought him up, and 80% of them believe he misrepresents science and scientists. Wow. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Um, lots of the time you see Dawkins speaking on camera. That's actually Ben Stein or Ray Comfort doing a voiceover. <laughs> He's that. to see yeah. him, but that's the voice. So. <laughs> and and look, 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 this is hilarious, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Dawkins is one of the more popular and public controversial scientists. And this was a study about how people view science and scientists. Nobody's going to talk shit about Neil deGrasse Tyson unless they ask me. Right. That said, <laughs> if iTunes did a survey of what people like about podcasts and 48 people mentioned that they hated me as a person <laughs> i think that was funny too <laughs> ridicule is not the way to change people's minds now you're just gonna hate them back it's not <laughs> you should vote for gary johnson i hear he's great yeah he's worth them <laughs> so well those protest votes didn't matter huh? didn't really matter how you feeling? in the end how you feeling you feel good oh, you feel good Did gary johnson you win? Profile Did he win? Go? no where'd your great where'd your jill profile filter go what happened what happened to your Jill profile filter? <laughs> you were going to get 5% and then she was going to get to face the wrong way at the debate. Remember? <laughs> huh? What happened? And finally tonight, from the Jesus of Brazareth file, we have a new statement from the Christian leadership on their policy about watching porn with your spouse. And it came from Pastor John Piper, who's kind of like a low-budget Pat Robertson with an advice column and a podcast, <laughs> according to Pastor J. Pipes, who looks like Richard Dawkins became a Keebler elf. It's <laughs> extremely sinful for a married couple to watch porn together. And the reason, as far as I could tell, uh, it's because Jesus had no problems getting erections at church like without any help from you porn i think that's what he's saying second coming joke 
So, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was a little early on that. Happens. Just it's your. It's just that you're so you're so funny. <laughs> so funny. I'll be ready to go again in a couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and look, there are plenty of reasons not to watch porn with your spouse. Okay, if only to present that, like, oh, I was joking. Of course I'm not into that. I just, oh, look on your face. No, you choose. You choose. Oh, stupid. <laughs> Pissdrinkers.com. <laughs> Crazy. I don't want to watch someone cut off Melissa Joan Hart's hand. <laughs> I don't own that website. Yeah, so you, uh, you, you might be wondering how this pastor ended up making a public statement about Jesus Christ's penis arousal as it relates to the sex life of modern day married I am couples. Not, nor was I. Uh, very well, it's a very reasonable thing to be wondering. Yeah, reasonable if you were, people would and wonder. And you guys that. are lying. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently someone sent Pastor Piper a question to answer on his show, and sadly, despite what you are all definitely thinking right now, it had nothing to do with how many pickled peckers Pastor Piper picked. <laughs> But it was somewhat related. It was. The question was, <laughs> is it sinful to watch porn with my spouse before sex? And the pastor's answer was basically, yes, and you should apologize for being a rapist. My wife and I fucked to this video. But, uh, you know, like, look, <laughs> the, the apologizing for being a rapist thing is so overrated. You can win in the Rust Belt without that. Oh, apparently. Idiots. Sorry, what were we talking about? <laughs> Guys, Noah thought a lamp was Donald Trump earlier. I am worried. Send help. All right, so here's the actual response from Pastor Piper. He started by mentioning Ephesians 5.25, which says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. From behind? I don't... I I, I guess guess. leave her to walk around the Middle East with 12 dudes? Something like that. (laughs) Ironically... Porn with 12 Middle Eastern dudes, the only porn me and my wife watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then uh, he also added, quote, it's inconceivable that the pleasures Christ has in the church would be awakened and stimulated by his imaging a prostitute to get his juices flowing. His end quote. He said, while clearly thinking about Jesus going from six to midnight. Well, right. <laughs> so obviously that word doesn't mean what he thinks it means. <laughs> All right, so as usual, we found a story in which a member of the clergy very clearly asked us to start listing pornographic movie titles. Am I right? <laughs> it sounds yeah, like the it. The more things and change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> so we've already got those 30 seconds on the clock. Clearly, we're looking for porn to help Jesus get hard before giving a sermon. Go. All right, all right. Well, we know he's into B&D, so how about... Fifty Shades of Prey, Hard Beams, Guards, Screams, and Nard Creams. I <laughs> oh, figured you God. wanted a about, slogan uh, to go with it. A slogan. I, I got a good one. I got a good one. Ready? Foot washing whores. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come, that's so good. Oh, you're, you're all dead to me. You're all dead to me in your cars just driving around sad. Eli's just promoting his websites this whole episode. It's weird. <laughs> Whatever. Um, all right, how about The Little Jew Pill? If your resurrection lasts more than four hours, wait another 2,000 years. It'll probably Plus. happen any minute. Plus. All right. How about the semen on the mound? Bonin' like Onan. Ooh, uh, <laughs> olive tree burners four. <laughs> One through three kind of sucked, but four really got it going. That did it for me. Yeah. yeah. Right, what about first porn of all creation? We'll make you see God. Uh, wait, that that's your dad's bad thing. Uh, my my dad can saying? beat off your dad. I don't know. <laughs> Why do you keep saying your dad's name during sex? That's weird. Um, how about the high-res erection? Now let me show you what I meant by snake handling. There's also stuff about swallowing in that passage. Mm, I, nail my hands? <laughs> it's the best yeah. Dutch rudders. Right. Uh, what about thy kingdom come? <laughs> they will become they will, they will. <laughs> with girth as it is in heaven give us this spray our daily head i don't know something like that uh no two, i'm going two girls one holy child there we go oh, there we go excellent. and happy scrappy hero and we, apparently we've now met our two girls one cup joke quota uh so that means we can close out the headlines for the week heath eli thanks for not inhaling carbon monoxide last night electoral college is a fun game <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a fun game and when we come ah. back, we'll get to some long overdue vulgarity, because it's been seconds.
Ahmed. Allah, I'm finally here in heaven. Yes, yes, uh, and as a result, you may help yourself to all that I have promised you. Oh, I knew that suicide bombing would be worth it. Oh, yes, very much so. Here's your couch made of gold. Mm-hmm. And uh, over here is the river made of non-alcoholic wine. Oh, um, yeah, maybe maybe later I'll have some non-alcoholic wine. Oh, okay, okay uh, maybe some fruit. We, we got a shit ton of fruit, anything you want. Actually, I was really hoping to, you know, dive into the hoori. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Uh, totally, here you go. Uh, 72 hoori. These are raisins. Yeah, yep. Raisins. Hoori. Original Arabic. Hoori. Um, th- raisins. That, that, that is not what I was told when I was on Earth. Well, well I'm informed that this is the original Arabic, so... There you go. 72 raisins. They're, they're delicious. Try one. Oh, this is such fucking bullshit. You know I was promised 72 virgins. I blew myself up in the middle of a supermarket for this shit, and I did not do it for mangoes on a couch that, to be quite honest, looks fucking uncomfortable because it's made out of goddamn gold and raisins. Well, well, fuck. I, I don't know what to tell you. They're, they're mistranslated. Well, this is bullshit. Uh, okay, well. Hey, uh, everyone who died a virgin is in lesser heaven, but y- you can fuck one of them if you want. Okay, th- see, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Uh, uh th- this is Steven. Say hi, Steven. Hashtag Gamergate. Nope, I'm going to hell with the hot soup people. Where's the hot soup line? Damn it, Steven. Do, do you know how many more men kill themselves than women every year? I mean, come on, what the fuck do you expect? Fuck you, Steven. Seriously, fuck You. You. You're the worst. (laughs) Hey, guys. Dude. What did you do? I was was just making everybody dinner. That is very much not what you're presently doing. There's blood everywhere. What? Yeah, excuse me for trying to use fresh ingredients. What did you... How did you even get... Okay, well... What is... I know how you guys love bacon, and... (laughs) We've been doing ads for Blue Apron, so I figured, how, how hard could it be to get fresh ingredients? I mean, Blue Apron has established partnerships with 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. As a result, seafood is sourced sustainably under standards developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. Their beef, chicken, and pork comes from responsibly raised animal, and regenerative farming practices are used for produce. So, I figured, how hard could it be to get my buddies some some bacon on my own. Dude, why didn't you just order Blue Apron? Oh, you know, they never deliver here. <laughs> Actually, they deliver to over 99% of the continental United States. <laughs> you know that? Who'd have thought? Getting dizzy. Gonna sit down. Well, anyways, since Blue Apron is only $10 a meal, I figured, hey, how expensive can one pig be? Uh, very yeah, 2020 hindsight. Good for you. So, I steal the pig. Wait, you what? Please tell me you didn't kill a pig in our home. Oh, dude. Nope. No, no, no. Pigs are very strong. Very fast. This blood is all mine. Uh, what? Cinda has what? the pig. Says she's going to keep him as a pet now that I am very likely to die. Okay, I, I'm going to call Andrew. Yeah, uh, okay. While he does that, you at home can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash scathing. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash scathing. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. I'm going to call him Hamlet. Makes sense. Hamlet killed a guy too. Oh, that's my liver.
When we did Vulgarity for Charity last month, we were overwhelmed with the sheer number of our donors to the extent that if we had tried to just do a straight series of episodes, it would have ended up as a literal month plus of both of our shows, Us and Cognitive Dissonance, just reading the insults. However, we think we've given you enough of a break to dive back in, so Tom and Cecil will be taking half of the remaining roasties and we'll be taking the other. Now, this is about half of what we've got left, if that. So if you don't hear your insult, don't worry. Uh, it'll be on the future show or it'll be on Cogdis, so you just got to listen to both. And just a reminder, if you donated, because we hit our goal, Tom, Cecil, and ourselves will be doing a bonus donors only ask me anything episode that'll be released sometime next week. If you'd like to ask a question, there's a post to do so on our Facebook page. All right, Heath, Eli, are you ready to get this started? All right, Eli doesn't know where Soho is. He stole a black usher, it was fine to stab a body in a wake. It it sounds way worse out of context. (laughs) If you don't tell the whole story, I look like an idiot. All right. So our first request comes from Kevin, who would like us to roast his best friend, Sean. Heath, why don't you take this one? All right. um, Sean looks like somebody should be yelling at him to hurry up and make their goddamn martini without first growing a batch of heirloom fennel leaves as a fucking garnish. (laughs) You don't need to stop at Whole Foods to put gin and vermouth in a glass, Sean. God damn it. You look like your ancestors got raped by Vikings, but... Probably last. Probably <laughs> the last one. To, like, you guys want to rape one more? Oh, oh, okay. Last one, and we're leaving. Last one. <laughs> All right, Eli, we got a request from Steve to roast his friend Joel. Have at it. Oh, Joel looks like he's scheming to close some scrappy teen ski center in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's going to make the news someday for being saved from a bullet by his hair. <laughs> All right, and I'll do the next one here. We got a donation from Chris asking us to roast his buddy Finch. And Chris doesn't know why he's called Finch, but we can only assume it's because he's been used in creationist literature as evidence against evolution. And and Chris apparently wanted him roasted because he has a wireless setup for his guitar so he can wander around the venue forcing people to pretend to like his music from close up. And I agree with Chris. That's a dick move, bro. All right, Eli, we got another one for you. Mick would like us to roast his cardiologist friend Paul, who drinks like a lightweight... And is a Collingwood Magpies fan. Oh, the Collingwood Magpies. Man, psh, everyone knows they're the worst <laughs> at the sport they play. <laughs> Boy, are they bad. Jeez. Oh, that's okay. I, I don't need to know the sport because Mick sent us a picture. And Paul looks like if he loosened his tie, all the blood that's stuck in his giant Jewish-looking head would rush back into his body. Like an actualized version of Mr. Mackey from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'll take this next one here. We got a donation from George asking us to roast his beloved uncle, Andy Brooks. George wrote of his uncle, Andy, quote, he's the most intelligent, caring, thoughtful, and generally the most good man I know. He is, however, like all of my family, very Christian. Can you insult him in a way that encapsulates my love and respect for him while simultaneously ridiculing the belief system he's based his life on so I can play him the clip? So, uh... No, can't can't do that because first of all, because you sent a picture and he looks like a gay Tony Abbott underwent recreational chemotherapy. And I'd rather talk about that. Plus, the fact that he does good shit doesn't count if he thinks he gets extra hit points in posthumous wonderland for it. But he seems like a cool guy when he's not waxing his testicles so they match his head, if that helps. (laughs) You can play on that last part. I don't know. (laughs) And anyway, Heath, we got a donation from Liam asking us to roast his best friend, Richie Stone, who once tried to P on Liam and owns a PR company. Huh, a PR Kelly, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. And of course, he sent us a picture here as well. All right, lovely. Um, Richie looks like a supervillain whose arch nemesis is dominant genes. <laughs> Like, like if, if this person sees a black person, he starts disappearing like Marty McFly's picture in Back to the Future. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I got a couple of challenges for you. Eli, we got a donation from Nick and Angelica asking us to roast Tim Cook and John Stump, respectively. But since they're both CEOs, I want you to do it in the style of a turtleneck wearing Apple event. Ooh, okay. Uh, Morgan, can I get some Apple mystical music? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hi, I'm Tim Cook, and I'm the closest thing we could find to Steve Jobs. I'm like a gay (laughs) Steve Jobs, kind of, but I don't have the imagination. Anyways, I'm just here for this stuff. Anyway, here at Apple, we're dedicated to a brand new world, a world without limits. And that's why we're introducing the Apple Stump. You've heard of (laughs) Apple Pay. Well, this is exactly like that, except it flushes your money 
right down the goddamn toilet. <laughs> <laughs> All with the sleek, smooth design of looking like it's hiding Nazi gold. Because it probably is. <laughs> the Apple Stump. No matter what we make, people will buy it. <laughs> Chinese people. Excellent. Well worth $700 <laughs> and waiting in line for six days. And while we're on the subject of horrible bosses, we got a donation from Michael asking us to roast his boss, Jim, and Jessica asking us to roast her boss, Lou. But my challenge to you is I want you to roast the both of them while firing them. Huh. All right. All right. Got it. Um, hi, Jim, Lou. Come on in. Uh, just wanted to get you both up to speed on our new business model. Um, Turns out we need to do a little downsizing, and since you're both managers, we're going to need you to be involved. Uh, the new consultants told us that we should eliminate the position entirely of uh, overpaid supervisors with no people skills who look like mediocre golfers with a wife on Ashley Madison. So, <laughs> yeah, this is awkward uh, for you. Just uh, don't mention anything to yourselves until Friday. It's best <laughs> hour. Thanks. Okay, okay, I got a challenge for you, Noah. Seeing as you are the foremost marriage expert on the show. Hey, wait, you're married too now. Yeah, the other day Anna caught me asking a pineapple to open up our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair point, fair point, go on. <laughs> well, we got a donation from Cheryl asking us to roast her husband Rick, and a donation from Jennifer asking us to roast her husband Alex, but my challenge to you is to do it in married speak. I'm sorry, married speak? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll use one of Anna's. Uh, regular speak. If you don't pick your socks off the bedroom floor, I'm going to turn them into a noose and hang you with them as a warning to future husband. <laughs> married speak. <laughs> Honey, I know you're super busy fighting with people you don't know on Twitter, but when you get a second, can you pick up your socks? You're so great at picking up your socks. <laughs> Gotcha. Married for, what, six weeks? And that's already a thing in your lexicon. <laughs> Anniversaries are plenty for you, sir. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Hey, Rick, have I mentioned how slimming flannel patterns are on you? <laughs> I haven't. I know, I know I haven't. I'm just <laughs> pointing that out, that neither I nor anyone else has ever said that. No reason. <laughs> just... <laughs> anyway, anyway, I was listening to this podcast the other day, and did you know you can get razors just like sent to your door periodically like brand new ones german craftsmanship and everything it's not that i don't love the two-tone neck beard look as much as i did when you were thinner but just just to, but german craftsmanship you know Ooh, good okay. stuff <laughs> and, and for alex oh i'm so sorry alex did i forget about you again like most people do immediately after meeting you i did i totally did I just, I just figured you were paying so much attention to yourself that there wouldn't be room for me to get in the way and pay attention to you too. That's phase two of marriage speak, by the way, Eli, in case you haven't come across that one. All right. Well, on that note, and keeping with the theme, looks like it's time for another spiking round. The category is X's. Thanks to Emmy, Melissa, Brian, Sheena, Chris, and Christopher. So I'm going to start off with Emmy's best friend's ex, Tim who looks like the molestiest new kid on the block was killed while turning into the thing. <laughs> also, we've got Melissa's ex-husband. Oh, uh, Lex Luthor quit his job to work on his scoliosis novel. <laughs> Brian's mom's ex-boyfriend. Uh, just because I lost this Facebook fight doesn't mean I need to stop commenting. <laughs> <laughs> Sheena's ex-stepmom's Vicky. Uh, Vicky looks like Donald Trump got turned into a lady. Uh, same spray tan, the, uh, the pumpkin spice badger. <laughs> right, called. right. And according to her profile on Craigslist that she has, she doesn't even wait, just grabs him by the dick. I, I, I see. <laughs> All right, how about, uh, Chris's brother's ex-wife, Renee? I'll take this one. She looks like Patton Oswald underwent gender reassignment surgery, but his heart wasn't really in it. All right, how about, uh, Christopher's crazy ex, Eli? Okay, so quick explanation. Uh, Christopher sent us the transformational pictures of this person, and it is the craziest thing I have ever seen in photography. Werewolves are freaked out by Christopher's crazy ex. <laughs> like, oh, God. At least I just turned into a wolf and kill my wife. <laughs> All right, and Heath, we got a donation from Mackenzie asking us to roast Andy. Uh, well, I actually feel bad for Andy. Um, I'm guessing it's super aggravating to deal with all those disgruntled birds with slingshots fucking up your house. <laughs> Wolves always blowing on it and stuff. Yeah. I'm not doing it. All right, I'll take this next one as well. We got a donation from Ty asking us to roast his brother, Matt. And uh, Matt sells hearing aids. 
I assume because people don't have the heart to tell him, they just don't give a fuck about what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's just sitting there like, you know, I meet a lot of people who are hard of hearing. Virtually none of them seems to have a hearing aid. There's a spot <laughs> in this market for me. And Eli, we also got a donation from Anton asking us to roast his friend. Oh, see, now this one's a challenge because he's not a bad looking dude. Nice salt and pepper beard, nice eyes. However, if we travel down to his teeth, You'll notice that Anton's friend is apparently 50% cartoon dinosaur. <laughs> he looks like the main character in a Pixar movie about a caveman who must teach his tribe to pick up 19-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got another challenge round here for you. People who want us to roast them. Now, I'll go first. We got a donation from Wilson, who has green and yellow hair that he occasionally wears in an Olympic torch. So, Wilson... I appreciate the effort, but I could have made fun of you anyway. You didn't have to go out of your way for us or anything. Setting aside the please look at something other than my face hairdo, you look like Charles Schultz added his vaguely ethnic boy lover to peanuts towards the end. <laughs> Just making Schroeder uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, I want to do one. Uh, so we got a donation from Christopher uh, with the sideburns. And Christopher looks like his Beatles cover band is going to take off just as soon as the incident with the ice machine is cleared up. <laughs> Christopher mentioned in his letter to us that his ex left him for a woman. And honestly, Christopher, I got to tell you, you're partially responsible for growing two 1970s vaginas on either side of your face. <laughs> it's on you. I'm confused, sir. All right, Heath, this next one is for you. Jonathan Spies would like a roast of his physical appearance and also a compliment for the girl in the picture with him. Her name is Lily. Go. Okay. Okay, I got to combine those two. All right. Uh, Jonathan looks like he met Lily when the Make-A-Wish Foundation set him up with his first Nuru massage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment to Lily, just to be clear. Yeah, oh, absolutely. If you saw yeah, my uh, history, you'd know those are big compliments. <laughs> That's We're a pornography a deep cut for those who really, really <laughs> like Asian porn. That's a real deep, deep cut for you. <laughs> and we also got a donation from DJ asking us to roast him and his friend Mike. So let's take these guys together. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start off by saying they look like two gay truckers decided to go as Tom and Cecil for Halloween. <laughs> Uncanny. <laughs> uh, these guys look like they begin every conversation with women with, tell them about the time I accidentally cut off your blank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike looks like he voted for Donald Trump because DJ is going to get deported and stop taking her jail. <laughs> Now I'm depressed again. And on that note, we're going to bring this section of vulgarity for charity to a close. Remember, if you didn't hear your insult, there's still plenty from us and Tom and Cecil to get. Uh, and if you're a donor, keep an eye on your inbox in the coming weeks for a recording of your AMA. But in the meantime, get on Facebook and ask those questions. And thanks for your patience. Before we all die in a war to defend the honor of our noble leader's toupee, I want to tell you that it was fun being America. For fuck's sake, what the fuck happened? Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend God Awful Movies debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. And hopefully we won't be morbidly depressed by then, but we probably still will be. Just warning you, we're going to try to be funny, though. Obviously, it wouldn't be a full-blown show if I didn't thank Heath for not moving to Canada before this week's recording. I want to thank Lucinda for not moving to Scotland before this week's record. And I want to thank Eli for eventually conceding that Lemuria wasn't a real place and only later conceding not to move there before the record. I also want to thank the protest voters and the people who stayed at home on Election Day for irrevocably fucking up the world. Sorry, need to shift gears here. I also want to thank Jason and the voice of a robot from the Skeptic Smash Talk podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. If you'd like to give him a listen, it'll drown out the voices in your head that keep repeating he's actually going to be president. In. It'll also entertain and educate you and shit, but I'm just assuming you're prioritizing like I am. Some things are more important than other things. But most of all, of course, I need to thank this week's most vivacious voters, Jeremy Anthony, Ken Henrik, Bill Bronson and Dennis, Charlotte, the Skeptopath, Dayseth, Daniel, Ricardo, Devin, Patrick, Christopher, Totoro, Helen, Carolyn, Blue Eagle 55, and Whitney. Jeremy Anthony, Ken Henrik, and Bill, whose erections have to be gerrymandered around just to keep them all in single voting districts. Bronson and Dennis, Charlotte, the Skeptopath, and Dayseth, whose IQ points would 
still outnumber presidential electors if we switch to a popular vote. Daniel Ricardo, Devin, Patrick, and Christopher, whose sexual stamina allows him to come even later than the Wayne County vote count. And Totoro, Helen, Carol, and Blue Eagle 55, and Whitney, who are so dreamy the poll forecasters were probably too busy thinking about them to put together a sensible fucking election prediction. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Together, these 20 tawdry, tantalizing, tenacious, titillating, and talented people, neuropathic designations, and Eagle 55s have helped bring the light of a few more dick jokes into an ever darker world this week by giving us money. If you'd like to be as cool and awesome as those people, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad free edition of every episode, or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but you already switched out all your money for the currency of the new country you're moving to, you can also help us a ton by leaving us a five star review on iTunes, telling a friend about the show, and saving us a spot at the refugee camp in Yellowknife or wherever you wind up. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by yours truly, except for the bit that was written and performed by Morgan, where Eli kind of made sure that you knew that in advance. And yes, I did have our permission. Joining me for headlines tonight are two very, two very people. Sorry. I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> Just adding varies into my thing, like randomly putting <laughs> periods. In. I'm I'm gaslighting Noah to think he can't spell, <laughs> and spell checking all my stuff. <laughs> it's like Jim adding the nickels to Dwight's receiver in the office. Yeah, Frank War. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.